Russia. My name is Konstantin and this is Inside Russia. I'm currently in Uzbekistan, in the capital city of Tashkent, but physically, but my heart and my soul is in Russia and I still am giving you updates on what is going on in Russia. Mods, could you please email me um, if you can see and hear me well? I hope there will be no buffering today. Uh, just a quick update from yesterday. I had a very tough stream yesterday. Lorna is emailing 5x5, five five. thank you so much. Yesterday, my friends, um, I shared very personal details with you and very, very tough. Today, I am feeling better because I received so much mail with words of encouragement, wishes, prayers, and I received, get this, one song, very unique song, uh, written and performed by one of the subscribers. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, very therapeutic and very much appreciated. I'm going to, I hope that what I'm going to tell you today will be interesting. My streams are always divided into two parts. The first part, comments off. I want to concentrate on delivering the message to you. Don't want to be interrupted because if I get messages, wishes, prayers, super chats. That just throws me off a little bit. So, <clears throat> without further ado, let's get into it. Interesting. What do you think? Is it possible to destroy a country no matter how large or small, is it possible to destroy a country in 40 days? What do you think? I know there are no comments, but uh, it's kind of a rhetorical question. Uh, please let me know your opinion if you agree or disagree with me uh, when I turn the comments on. Now I'm going to tell you about current state of affairs in Russia as of right now, Friday. 9th of April, it's actually midnight, it's past midnight here, 0005 of 9th of April, for you it's the 8th of April, okay. Um, and then after that, I'm going to tell you what the heck happened to my country. Now, listen very carefully, there's a disclaimer, what I am about to say is my opinion only, solely, and I could be wrong, I could be mistaken, I could be uh, misunderstood, or I could be misinformed. This is just my opinion, you don't have to agree or disagree with it, um, I could be wrong, you know, that's just mostly for the Russian government. What is happening in Russia right now? What is the state of Russia right now? I think, and again, this is my opinion, Russia has been destroyed. On February 23rd, Russia was doing well. We had problems, we had certain difficulties, we had challenges that we would overcome as society. And then the next day, on the 24th of February, this event started and Russia started getting hit really, really hard. It started getting hit externally and internally. And both externally and internally has been very painful and very, very sad for us, for me personally. Now, Russia started this event. I still don't know the reasons behind the start of this event because it appears from where I am standing right now in time, in place, that we simply shot ourselves in both feet 
and then we shot ourselves in both kneecaps and then we cut one of our arms off, chopped it off. And this is where we are right now. Right after the event started, the international community, this global village that Russia used to be a part of, has gone crazy for good reason. Countries started standing up, rising up and saying, hey, you can't do this. You just can't. This is 21st century, 2022. There are rules, norms, uh, rules of behaving in, in the international community. And if you don't follow the rules, then you got to get expelled. And this is exactly what the countries started doing. They started expelling Russia. And they started doing it right away on day number two after the you know, announcement of the special operation. And they started doing very effectively. Um, on the government level, they froze Russian finances, Russian um, um, reserves. Uh, it's really a good question why Russian reserves were not in Russia. You know, that kind of smells like treason, okay? But this issue has not, miraculously, has not been touched by anyone. And I think it will be because, you know, we don't forget. Uh, I just want that all responsible people who made mistakes should be responsible for it, should be paying according to the Russian law, you know. So uh, the governments of the entire world started hitting Russia with sanctions on the governmental level and private companies, large and small corporations followed. A lot of companies started announcing that they were planning on closing the doors in Russia for their businesses and they did. Soon after they did, they closed everything. Um, most of Western companies right now have left Russia, believe it or not. They were very quick to do that within two or three weeks and that's it. Most Russian financial institutions, large financial institutions have been hit by uh, certain limitations and it's pretty bad. It's getting worse and worse. Our life is becoming more difficult by the day here in Russia. But that's not the worst thing, okay? We can live, t theoretically, we can live without McDonald's. We can live without Burger King. We can live without H&M, okay? Gosh, we can even live without Visa and MasterCard, okay? That's something that can be worked around. Not a, I'm not saying that we should. I would rather have those companies here inside Russia working because that's freedom, free market. They brought free market. They formed free market. They brought competition to my country. And I'm so thankful to McDonald's, to Inditex and the companies like that for actually showing us how the world, the market economy works, right? I warned them to, 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 to be in Russia. Unfortunately, they have left and I don't know for how long. I think that's uh, going to be a very long time. But anyway, Russia started getting canceled on a governmental level, on a private corporation level. And what has followed, even worse, that a lot of people in the world started uniting, not only behind Ukraine, which is a wonderful thing, I think Ukraine needs very much help these days. All help it can get, okay? Um, especially financial help um, re to rebuild the country once this event is over. Granted, nothing can bring people back, you know, that's, I don't even know what to say about that tragedy, but. Um, so, the entire world has united behind Ukraine, but also the entire world has united against Russia. And Russian government officials, at least some of them, most of them, few of them, I don't know, they had not expected anything like that. Because all politicians who are more or less who and who in Russia, all oligarchs, very um, powerful and rich people in Russia, they have been hit with personal sanctions. It means 
all their assets, all their money outside of Russia frozen, confiscated, seized, all the property is taken away from them. They cannot travel, they cannot use planes, yachts, you know, Russian, Russian um, officials like politicians, they cannot travel outside of Russia anymore. That's perhaps a good thing, you know, but I don't know. They've been building Russia for the Russians, for themselves, because the Russians, let's all be in Russia now, okay? Um, and them too. And um, that definitely is much more important, much more dangerous for Russians than the whole world uniting against Russians, okay? Indelible mark has been placed on all our foreheads. I feel it. It's burning right here. Indelible mark, visible to the everyone, you know, in the outside world that I am Russian. And it's not going to go away anytime soon, even after this event stops. Well, it hasn't stopped, okay? That, my friends, is definitely not good. But still, this is just not the complete destruction of Russia. Uh, I named my stream How to Destroy Russia in 40 Days, okay? And I'm saying to you that my opinion that Russia has been destroyed, but not by the governments, not by the private corporations, and not by the Westerners uniting against Russia. Because you know what? The only thing that can destroy Russia is the people, the Russians themselves. And that just does not apply only to, for, to Russia. It applies to all the countries. No one can destroy my family except for myself, my wife and my kids. If you make mistakes, if we do something really wrong, us, nothing can destroy us except for us. No other people, no relatives, no friends, you know, it's us. It's about us. Um, nothing can destroy a country except for the people inside the country, okay? And this is where it gets very, very serious. Like I said many times already in the streams, there has been a chasm growing between Russians. The society has been split in two parts. And I was the first one to tell you that. My stream number three was cancel culture introduced in Russia. Go back and watch it. It was on the February 26, I believe. This is when I first noticed, started noticing that Russians started fighting Russians, started canceling each other, started unfriending friends, stopped talking to friends because of simply another person would have a different opinion. And that, my friends, is plaque. That what destroys countries. You see, the country is like a house. A house with a strong foundation is really hard almost impossible to knock down or destroy completely. It can burn down, but if it's a strong concrete slab foundation, then uh, the upper part can be easily rebuilt, okay? If a heavy machinery comes and, you know, the special huge balls and knocks the house right off, right down, then foundation is still gonna be in the ground and you can easily rebuild house, even a better one, bigger one, you know, newer one, on this old, strong, concrete foundation. <sighs> values, people's values is the foundation of any country, including Russia. My country is no exception. And when the values of Russian people have started I, I don't even know what happened to them. I can't, I can't say they started deteriorating. It's just all of a sudden everything fell, fell apart, okay? People have started going against people, against family members, against friends, you know. People started getting into fights. That happened to me too. I've seen it happen. I, 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 I've experienced it, you know. And... Uh, this is what I think. 
This is what I think that has destroyed Russia. A lot of Russians started believing one thing, a lot of Russians started believing another thing. Instead of finding a compromise, instead of using common sense, instead of using critical thinking, the majority of Russians have said, if you're not with us, you are against us. If you're not with us, you are traitors. And this is a very special hard time for a country, and this is no time to have traitors. So you gotta pick your side. That's what they've been saying, you know. And I think that this is not gonna get any better. That's gonna get much worse, okay? Again, this is my opinion. I can be absolutely wrong. Disclaimer. But this is what I think. So, I think Russia has gotten into a perfect storm. It was uh, placed amongst a perfect storm of international sanctions. And it's not just about sanctions, because we had sanctions before, 2014, 2015, 2016, sanction after sanction after sanction, you know. But Russia was not destroyed, it withstood. Now, it's the government sanctions. It's the private companies saying, hey, you know what? We don't want to work in Russia anymore. We find you toxic. We don't want your money. Yes, we're going to lose money, but you know what? That's okay, because our ethics don't allow to work in Russia. And over 160 large chains, Western chains, have quit, left Russia. And uh, Western companies who are remaining, they're thinking of closing down. I think by the end of summer, we will lose most of Western companies working here. So it was the sanctions from the governments. It was uh, conscious decisions of large corporations. And what's the worst thing? The foundation, the values. These, the foundation started cracking. And this is the tragedy. Oh my God. So I think Russia has been destroyed. We are seeing the facade that hasn't fallen apart yet, but the cracks are going over the foundation and it's influencing the walls, the windows. You know, the paint is getting peeled off. Uh, everything is uh, cracking, so to speak. Uh, the, the, the cracks go all over the place and it starts, starts falling apart. And I think what we're seeing right now is not only tragedy for Ukraine, but tragedy for Russia, okay? Uh, I think that Ukraine is in a better position now because Ukraine has support of pretty much the entire world. Russia is in a different place. Uh, of course, nothing can bring people back who are that who died, who were killed in Ukraine. That's a tragedy. Ukrainians, first of all, and then Russian. Russian soldiers, they've died too. Uh, but Ukraine will get up. Ukraine will be rebuilt. And it's going to be shining. Because it has support of the entire world behind it. Now, this is the first part of my message. The second part is... I think that I need to tell you, has it really happened in 40 days, like my title of the, uh, the stream says, how Russia destroyed in 40 days? Is this possible to destroy a country in 40 days? What do you think? I think no. No. No way. You cannot destroy a country in 40 days. Again, I come back to the foundation. If the foundation is strong, the country will withstand. If foundation is not strong, not gonna be good. What happened to our foundation in Russia? What is our foundation? What are our values? Okay, it's 
a really long story. It's not for this stream, but let me tell you something. We have fallen apart not, not in 40 days. Our demise started a long time ago. And it's not, it's not about the Russian government. The Russian government is merely a group of people who have been doing everything that the Russians have allowed that group to be doing. I made a video quite some time ago about America, where I was looking at America from afar and I was saying, what's the problem of Americans? It's not the government, it's not the politicians, but that's ignorance of people that do not get involved in politics and they kind of think it's none of their business and they let politicians do whatever they want. Same problem here in Russia, only much worse, okay? In America, there's a saying, there's a like understanding of people that we are the people and we can change things if we want to. Here in Russia, there is an understanding of people that we, regular people, we cannot do much. The government is above us. The government, we cannot do anything about it. The government always acts as if it was a separate entity in the country, okay? The government always acts as if it knows what is best for the country. Not we the people know that what's best for the country, but the government, okay? And no matter what we do, we go vote, we don't go vote, we vote for one person or for another person, nothing is going to change and nothing is in our power. This is the mantra of Russian people for last couple of decades, perhaps even longer. And this is my friends, what has destroyed Russia. I am absolutely sure of that. This destroyed our foundation of the country. If we had foundation, we would be de behaving differently right now. The government would have checks and balances um, and the people would be acting differently. The government would treat people differently, okay? Except, uh, instead, what we have been doing for the past perhaps even 30 years, we have been allowing it to completely control our lives. We have given up our rights to be in charge of our own lives. And this, my friends, is the biggest problem. I can compare to what is happening right now in my country to a uh, person having a heart attack. Heart attack is quick. It brings down a person no matter how large, no matter how small, you know, strong or weak. The strongest, largest athletes have heart attacks and they die or they just go down and lay on the ground and can't even move in seconds. In milliseconds, okay? It, it happens in a blink of an eye. One, one second you're standing, doing exercises, standing strong, you know, doing something. Another thing, you're on the ground, you cannot move, okay? What I think Russia is having right now is a heart attack. 40 days. For the history of the country, 40 days is a one second, you know? And this is a heart attack. But the heart attack never appears out of nowhere, okay? Heart attack is the journey, it's the culmination of a journey in months, perhaps years, perhaps decades. A person starts eating wrong, not exercising, uh, having some kind of diseases, and for year after year after year, those things build up, build up, build up, they don't happen quickly, you know, they happen over time, slowly. And the person can reverse those processes, but we usually choose not to. And all of a sudden, when we do not expect it, boom, we have a heart attack. Now, heart attack can be fatal, 
or it can be not fatal. You know, a lot of people recover and actually they start thinking about their health. They get really scared and they live long, f fulfilled lives after that, you know. So I think we're having a heart attack right now. And us, regular people, not the government, okay, I don't blame them. They're just, that's different situation. They're not going to say anything about them, okay? I don't approve. But if we did not allow, if we weren't allowing decade after decade to happen what has been happening, then we would not have had this heart attack right now. And this, my friends, is the message. Um, now, what I would like to say is, again, heart attacks can be fatal or they can be actually a good thing in a person's life. If treated in time, the person can recover and live healthy, happy life. And I think Russia is at the point right now where there's a crossroad. It can go to the better or it can go to the worse. And I think it's also up to us to decide. Okay, and uh, this is it. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for listening to my message. I hope you found it interesting. I would like to thank everyone who has sent me wonderful emails and the person, she didn't want to me to name her name. Uh, she wanted to keep it confidential, but amazing song. She just made up with it, like came up with a song and she was playing music and she sang it herself, you know. Thank you so much. That made my day so much better. And after reading all of that, after feeling through, through my heart, you know, I feel better today. Thank you so much. And I came up with this message. And I came up with a few messages for the next streams. So, so thank you. I'm going to turn on that's hot in here. The last time I'm doing a stream in a sweatshirt. That's it. T-shirts from now on. Um, I'm going to turn uh, uh, comments so I can get feedback from you. And please keep this chat clean. You know, don't troll. Um, don't make, don't put me into more danger than I'm already at. Um, a lot of people don't understand. I see from the comments that I am in danger. They're saying, oh, he's not saying anything like... Anyway, just just don't try to inform me what is happening outside of Russia. I know another tragic event happened today. Today, okay? I know everything about it. I saw videos, I saw pictures, I know what happened. So please don't try to inform me, okay? And uh, don't, don't name uh, names of big politicians. Please follow the instructions of my wonderful moderators, Lorna, Mommy, Robert Bates, Harry Potman, Pinball, Julia F., Bob S., and Yarn Prepper. Fantastic. Without you, uh, I would not have this, what I have, <laughs> these live streams. Just turn the comments on and let me know in the comments what do you think about the message. Do you agree with me or not? John Liebold from Australia. Hi there. Lorna is number one of, as usual. Harry Potter and Mommy, Robert, Piotr. Miss Sherry, agree. KL Stu, hello from Texas. Brian V, spot on, Constantine. Thank you so much. Dalai Lama, T, hello. Sir Hugo, cat flap. That made a lot of sense. Thank you so much. Paul, yes, but there will be a lot of pain for a while. Paul, people who go through heart attacks, they have a lot of pain for a while. And then they go on diet. They go on long treatment. They go on this un not so wonderful things. But they have a chance. I think we still have a chance, despite what we we have done. Okay, 
God is merciful and He gives everyone second, third, fourth chance. And we also as a country and as folks, as a people, we have a chance. But we just going to realize what's, what's happening. We're going we're gonna to change. Susan Nelly, great message. Thank you so much. Frank in Texas, great to see you. Alt Wiener, hello from Austria. Hello. Um, Hanu Hani, hello from Finland. Respect to you. Thank you so much. Likewise, Christopher Law, hello from California. Hi, Christopher. Kim Chi, Oregon is here. Uh, we have Vladimir Putin showed up. Hi there. Beer, greetings from Berlin, brother. Pet beer. Hi there. Silvia Santi. Hi, everyone. Agree with Constantine 100%. Thank you so much. Thank you. Scott Cormier. Hey, buddy. I'd love your email if possible. Love your spirit. My email is in the above section. Go and look for it. Not, not the above, about, in the about section. There you go. So much better today. Yesterday was really a tough stream, you know. Kenneth O, do you think the younger generation has fully understood the long-term effects of what's happening? No. Kenneth O, I judge by Russian bloggers. Most bloggers are young. Uh, Nikki Proshan, fantastic guy, Zangiev, Crazy Russian Sergey, Ellie from Russia, Dari Step, their kids. Some of them so young, my oldest daughter would not date them because they're too young for her, you know. Um, fantastic kids, I like them all. There's not one single person I dislike. I think the older ones are um, Sergey Baklakov, but he's still younger. He, he barely remembers the USSR. Me and Slava, Russian Plus, we certainly, I think we're the oldest ones and we remember the USSR. So we, uh, two of us, we discussed this when Slava was visiting me in Moscow and we were making film together. You know, we discussed this possible situation. We just didn't know it would happen so fast, you know. Um, so it's, we understand where, what kind of, what we're in for. And how long, you know, for ah, at least 10 years, 20 years, I don't know, long, long time. A generation must pass, you know. But these kids, they just don't have too much experience. Although some of them have brains, let me tell you that. So hope, hopefully I uh, answered the question. Couple super chats, $10, Reezy Gray. I know what you're going to say. Thank you in advance. You know? <laughs> Hello from Canada, Mr. Popular. I knew that. I hope Russia can rid themselves of the darkness in their hearts so they can see the light. I pray every single day. I pray angels come with sharp swords, get rid of darkness and bring light. This is exactly what I say. Some people are perhaps beyond earthly salvation, but we can't let hope go. Thank you. Wonderful message. Wonderful. This is my thoughts exactly. Thank you for the super chat. and. Uh, Thanks for the message. $50 from RC. Hello, hello from LA. It is good to see you're doing better. I felt the hope and passion on your message come back for the first time in a few days. Look, RC, thanks for the money, but let me tell you what happened today. I woke up after yesterday's stream and all of a sudden I got tons of emails and words of encouragement. And every time I read, just so, touches my heart, you know, and uh, I felt so much better. And then this person, wonderful person, sent me a song, okay? Song is great. You, I, I wish I could, you know, have you listen to this, but she's, she, she said not to share with anyone, like, except for just my mom and a couple people, that's it. So, and that just changed so much. I was asking God, uh, and he gave me a message in, 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 uh, in form of this person sending me the song. You know, that's just another miracle that happened. So that's why I'm feeling much better. 
I tune into your live streams every day and this is one time I feel any peace in the chaotic world. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really glad that my streams have such an impact because on my end, I don't feel that much of an impact, okay? I'm just sharing what I gotta say and that, that's all. So, but thank you so much and thanks for the money. $50 is huge, it helps a lot. Christopher Law, $20. Will you eventually have a Crypto Monero <laughs> to donate to? I will, I will, I promise this weekend I will. Uh, tackle it down. Your streams are always wonderful. I'm glad that you, you won't give, give up on anyone. It is so much better than almost every comment online. Thank you. Um, I will not give up on anyone because you know what? People did not give up on me. Uh, I had really hard situations that I have gone in my life through and you know what? They never give up on me. They never gave up on me once. I'm not going to give up on other people, on anyone for that matter. So I'm, I'm here. Sabrina sending love, says Lorna. Uh, okay, thank you, Sabrina. That's wonderful. If you want me to have a chance to read your message, has just too many, uh, please put them in caps. Otherwise, I won't have a chance, you know. I'll, I'm just reading whatever is in caps. Uh, sometimes not, but it just catches my eye. Tudor, go, go, stay strong, Constantine. Greetings from Romania. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, my Romanian friend. Maya May, are more Russians coming into Uzbekistan? Maya, there is an exodus from Russia and they're coming to anywhere they can come and Uzbekistan is one of the countries they can come. So you go to any bank right now, there will be a line of Russians, it's called non-residents of Uzbekistan, the foreigners. And you can spot Russians easily, you know. They're sitting there in line to open uh, accounts. They have taken all the apartments, they have taken all the hotels, uh, you go to like I walk in Tashkent every night for an hour to two hours and there are quite a few um, nice places such as coffee shops, patisseries and things like that, all taken by Russians. Uh, MacBook, laptops, computer, uh, telephones, iPhones, streaming, doing lives, you know, any, just name it. There are so many of them. Programmers sitting from morning till night drinking very expensive coffee. So many, many Russians and more to come. I'm pretty sure of that. There is an exodus out of Russia. Mark Edwards, hi from St. Louis. Can you describe daily living in Russia today? Pressure cooker. In nutshell, uh, when I was in Russia, it's pressure cooker. I came here in Uzbekistan and I've been unwinding. It's still hard, but in Russia it's just there's so much weight on your shoulders. Anywhere you look, anywhere you talk to, any, any, any person you talk to, it always comes down to this event, okay? Uh, God bless from Oklahoma, says TZ Don. Thank you, thank you so much. Constantine, I sent you a message yesterday. Uh, what and what to do about it, hope it gets through to you. Lori, I'm not sure, I don't remember if I read it, there's so many messages, but I am catching up on Saturday and on Sunday. Tomorrow morning I'm going to have my eyes checked because it's been 10 days and after that I'm coming back and uh, I'm uh, definitely answering all emails. Oh, it might take me the entire day, but I'm gonna catch up, so thank you so much. I just don't remember what exactly your message was. But all messages are appreciated. Piotr, uh, thanks for ten dollars. I didn't. It just disappeared. <laughs> you see, you become beacon of hope in night. Piotr, thank you so much. I've told you personally how much you, a Polish person, touched my heart. Okay. Uh, just drop me a line sometime. Oh, you, I think there are emails from you. 
Uh, I think I think so. So thank you for sending me super chats and thank you for sending me messages because trust me that is really makes me feel much better. Okay. Leo P 10 Canadian dollars have brisket again. I cannot have brisket here in Tashkent. I've been without meat for seven or eight days. I don't even count anymore. But so far so good. I've lost weight. I feel much better. People say that uh, I And no good brisket here. No good brisket. I'm going to take you to the best pizza I've ever tried in my life 10 years ago. Italian pizza, there's an Italian restaurant in Tashkent, run, owned and run by Italian family. Italian cooks, Italian ovens, Italian pizza. Woohoo! It's called Il Migliore, okay? Or Il Migliore or something like that. So, Leo P, have brisket again. I, I'll, I'll have something indigenous, like some, some local food instead of brisket. I washed it and got hungry. I can eat half of slab. Sent you email, check your junk folder if you didn't get it. I simply didn't have time to go over all the emails. I probably got it. Thank you. Thanks for the money too. Mary Doran, it's beautiful that someone wrote a song for you. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. First time in my life. It goes to show how much people think of you, Constantine. Stay safe and hide your adapting to Tashkent somehow. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Mary, you are a serial chatter, commenter. Thank you so much. Good to, good to hear, good to read from you. Uh, love to Ireland from here, from my heart. Russia, Uzbekistan, it doesn't matter, you know. Luke Tardif. 28 Canadian dollars. This is for you and your family. Take care from Quebec. Thank you so much, Luke. Uh, Old Orchard Beach, Maine is my second, I consider it second home. I spent nine, almost eight years there, lived there, and uh, I worked in a hotel. I used to run a few hotels, and our main target audience in the summertime, guess who they were? Quebecois. So, thank you. Uh, Quebec is kind of in my heart as well. I even spoke a little bit of French, just enough to understand, like to, to uh, explain how much the night cost. Because a lot of uh, Quebecois, they didn't speak English. They only would speak French or they pretended that they didn't speak English. So we had to explain everything in French. Waldo, are you drunk? What is Waldo? Kitsch, Boomerang, Robert. Well, Lorna, perhaps he's had a few shots to drink, you know. It's no big deal. <laughs> Firefly Farm. Hello. Any place you can get some ice cream? Yes. Ice cream, Russian ice cream all over. Belarusian, pretty good. It's just I've cut sugar completely. I've cut meat and fast carbs. Uh, I'm trying to <laughs> shed some weight and feel better. And I ha I'm already feeling so much better. All it takes is 10 days. I've done that before, I know. So uh, no ice cream for me until I come back to Russia. Definitely not. Uh, but there's tons of excellent ice cream. Italian ice cream, Russian ice cream. Thanks for the super chat and great to see you. Uh, two super chats. At least it's showing two. Perhaps a glitch. Pedro and HM. Uh, Robert Bates deleted the message. Pedro, if you want me to answer the message, email me and I'll be glad to do that. Uh, SC one dollar. Thank you. Every single dollar counts, and dollar is also a very strong and powerful message. Thank you, my friend. Bjorn Hansen, 75 Norwegian Krone. The polar bear in northern Norway. Wish you peace and love, Constantine. Thank you so much, Bjorn. 
Will you please pray to Heavenly Father for today's victims in Ukraine every day? Every day and let me let me write it down for the victims. Actually, I pray for Ukrainians, but I never pray for the victims. Thank you. I will do. You do too. Please join me. Karen and Boston, Texas. Your eyes are bright today. I see peace. Makes this old lady smile. God bless you. Much better today, Karen. Thank you so much. It's just like I've been given, like I've been infused with energy or something, you know. Um, but far, far from peace. No peace yet. It's going to be a long way. Uh, thank you for the message. Thanks for the money. No peace, but much, much better. Much better. David Lapka. 20 Czech crowns. Warm greeting from Prague, Constantine. Thank you, David. Thank you. <laughs> Have a star of Praman for me, please. The one that is made in Prague. You know that star of Praman that's made at the factory in Prague for local market tastes different than that is sold anywhere else. Okay, I know I've tried it. It's a fantastic beer. My parents, well, my parents' friends used to live right next to the gates of Stara Praman factory. <laughs> Been there a couple times, they showed me. <sighs> pay me, Hanson. Pay me, pay me, uh, pay me, Hanson. New to your channel, praying for peace and thanks for sharing with us. Thank you for coming to the channel. Hope you like it and keep on coming back. Lars Olson, 40 Swedish Kronos. Thank you, Lars. No message, but sending a super chat is a very powerful message. Thank you very much. Love to Sweden. Raid Kok. Estonia. Wow, 5 euro. Hi from Estonia. Do you have any local news about Kazakhstan and Russia relations about the war? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, every time, keep on repeating it, but it never gets old. Every time I hear something good, I read message, comment, let alone receive a super chat from Eastern European, including Estonians, Latvians, Lithuanians. It always warms my heart. I know what a freaking hard history we've had you know, between our countries, and uh, then you are not writing us off is pretty amazing. Thank you so much. Ah. Ten minutes to go. It's actually quite a big topic, but Kazakh people, Kazakhstanians, they don't want to do anything with this event. They're saying that they're going to be neutral to Russia, because we are part of one union, Tamozhny uh, Soyuz, the customs union. They're not going to hit us with the sanctions, okay? But a lot of people, when we started getting hit with uh, sanctions, like companies would started to leave Russia, for example, cars, Mer German cars, Mercedes, BMWs, Audis, American cars, people were saying, oh, that's okay, that's okay, because what's going to happen, we're going to import through Kazakhstan, okay? It's going to be more expensive to pay for a car, but still we'll get the car, we'll, cars will get the parts. And recently, a few days ago, Kazakh people came out and said, you know what, you're not going to do that, not through Kazakhstan, because we, uh, you know, not supporting, we're not approving, we're not against, but we're not, we're not going to let you do that, okay? And that's pretty much the very strong message they sent us, the Russians, and I think they're going to stick to their message. I hope I answered your question. 
So Kazakhstan is standing strong. Hundred dollars from Kim McKay. Wow, hang in there, Constantine. You are loved and appreciated always. Kim, thank you so much. Um, your email touched me. Sorry, it took me a couple days to answer, but uh, please check your email. I would love to go ahead and do what you said. Perhaps we need to get in touch with you other than in other way, other than email. So uh, let me know. But I love the idea. Let, let's do it. Let's do it. Thanks for the money, by the way. Much appreciated. Wonderful words, wonderful message. A new sponsor, Rizzi Gray, deep inside Russia. Thank you for going to the new level. No, thank you. Susan, $10. Send in love and light, Constantine. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for all you do. Thank you so much for the message. Uh, I will keep on showing up and do what I do every day. Thank you. Five dollars from Kazarius. Bro, as a German, I know that this heart attack can be survived. Hope we all survive that event. Hope that this event won't escalate it to the worst. I am currently in discussion, in correspondence with a very famous German philosopher who has wrote multiple books on uh, this heart attack that happened in your country. Shut up, so I won't get in trouble, but I think you can read between the lines and you understand my point of view. Stephen Lindholm, five dollars. Here's a few dollars for more strawberries. One fruit, uh, and they're so good here, but they're so freaking expensive because need two more weeks, and we will get in-ground strawberries, not greenhouse, and that they're gonna be so much cheaper, like ten times cheaper. Thank you so much. Tomorrow I'm going to Chorsu again to film street food because I did Chorsu is so. Big. I'm going back and um, there's a little problem with Ramadan, this Muslim month that they don't eat at daytime and perhaps there will be less options at Chorsu street food but still I was told that there will be plenty so uh, I'll go there and I film and I use you, I'll use your five bucks to get myself more strawberries and uh, actually enjoy them. Thank you so much. Thank you for keeping us informed on what you experienced. Anthony Lobko, $5. Stay strong. I hope this tragedy ends soon. I hope, me too, me too. I hope and pray. Do you think the things you're saying now are putting you in danger? You've been more direct in the last few. Every time I open my mouth, I put myself in danger. That's the answer. Thanks for the message. Thanks for the super chat. Um, Lars Olson, 40 Swedish Krona. No message. Uh, thank you so much. That's very powerful message. Uh, Ray Robert Bates deleted the message. Write if you want me to answer email and I will gladly do so. Thanks for the money. Bert Corrigan, uh, I see you. I don't even have to read it anymore. I, I recognize your picture, your avatar. Thank you for $20. No message, but this is the message in its own, you know. Falcon song, five euro. Baltic friends, stay strong and united. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I missed Brian V super chat. Thank you so much, Frank in Texas. 
Um, Brian V. Cowboy Bebop, two dollars. Thank you so much. Boom. Ten minute warning. I'm not seeing Brian V. Oh, why me? Five dollars. Deleted message. Thanks for the money. Uh, please don't get upset. Upset. Uh, upset if your message is getting deleted because the the mods are really trying they're really trying envy there you go uh, I hope you got my email your videos are good to me Brian I probably did I am going again I'm going over all the emails unanswered once and I'm answering so I promise I'll get I'll get to your email At this point, I have around 100 emails unanswered. They just keep on coming. Karin Vasio, $4. Buy some strawberries for yourself. Pray for you. Thank you so much. Uh, Cowboy Bebop, $2. Do you think the UN is useful or important? I think it's useful and important because this is... The international community. Okay, if we don't have UN, that's going to be wild, wild west out there. And cancelled out of uh, Human Rights Council and all this wonderful, not so wonderful things. And I don't really know what's going to happen next, you know. Kurger Burger, welcome to Inside Russia. Amlagi, Amlagi, $20 Swedish, right? Thank you for um, itself. Thank you so much. Twenty five Australians from Australian dollars from Luke King. Here's a few bucks for faster internet connection. <laughs> really appreciate your content. All the best from Australia. Mods, couple more minutes, please, you know, um, and we'll go to the prayer. I, I want to pray a little different today. Or shall I say about something a little different, but from the same song, so to speak, you know. Let us pray, says Julie. Strange, the stream has 1080p option. This means you have not reduced the quality correctly to remove buffer. First of all, let me know if there's been any buffering. I'm not seeing any, okay? Fudge, there is buffering. Um, I did turn it down to 720p. What am I doing wrong? Uh, it's like the someone out there is trying to keep me away, stop me delivering messages. You know, it's not funny. You know, before every before every stream, I'm like a shaman running around. You know, this my setup and testing the speed connection, and I'm just double checking if it's like the lowest um, possible. Uh, setting at the Prism Live Studio that I use and things like that, and still ah, driving me nuts. Airy T, five dollars. Thank you for staying vocal and connected. More isolation fuels conflict. That's right. Thank you. Human race needs to stay connected. We understand each other better. We communicate with each other. We converse and we learn more about each other. And we learn that we're not enemies. A lot of Russians start thinking that we're surrounded by enemies. And you are enemies. And I know it's not the case. I'm trying to tell these Russians. They think I'm crazy. They don't want to listen to it. I cannot get through to them because they watch Russian TV, they watch the media and stuff like that, and then just totally influences them, okay? But if we stay connected, if we talk, if we travel, if we meet each 
understand the truth. And the truth is actually good. Truth is love. Truth is friendship, you know, no enemies. James Harvey is praying for myself and my family. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Amla, Amla G, Amlagi, I'm sorry, I don't know, 20 Swedish kron. Thank you. Okay, um, it's time to finish up and pray. Lots of believers out there uh, and many non-believers. I am asking everyone, despite your race, your gender, your belief, or non in prayer, and let's ask for good things for Ukraine, for Russia, for all of us, you know. And please join me in prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for help giving us such a wonderful day today. Thank you for putting food on our table's roof, over our heads. Um, thank you for surrounding us with people, loved ones, children, grandchildren, parents, siblings, family, friends, colleagues, and just good people. Thank you so much. Please forgive us our to please bring peace to Ukraine. I'm asking to bring peace into every single home in Ukraine, into every single family. I'm asking you to stop the bloodshed. I'm also asking you about the victims who have fallen due to this bloodshed. Um, please take them with your open arms and with your open heart and place them right next to you so they don't suffer and they look down and forgive everyone and they help the ones who need to be helped. Send angels in to guard every single person in Ukraine, no matter who. Um, send angels to Keep people out of harm's way, please. Please put sense into the heads of people making decisions on whether to stop or continue this bloodshed. Open their heads for common sense, reason and law. Love, compassion and mercy and open their eyes so they can see what they have done and they can get horrified and stop this bloodshed as soon as possible. Please do that. Please send your angels, strong angels with sharp swords, sharpest swords, to get rid of the demons that have hijacked my country. Have, please send angels to Russia to run Russia and make it shine. Make it beacon of light to everyone. Good neighbor, um, good member of international community. Please do that. Asking to help raise our kids in the way that when they grow and become adults, there will be no hate, no bad feelings inside of their hearts, just love, compassion, and mercy. And when they grow up, they will love each other, be friends to a fight, but just, you know, befriend one another. I would like to ask you 
to help people who have united behind Ukraine to help it. Um, there are so many people out there in the world who are providing something to the Ukrainians. Uh, money, products, food, uh, clothing, wishes, prayers, attention, their time. Please help those who are helping Ukraine now. Help those who are praying for Russia as well. I know there are people like that in the world because Russia also needs your help. Please help everyone who is praying with me in this live stream right now. And please have the prayers of these people answered and have their wishes come true, come, come, come to whatever they wish. Give them the whatever they wish for. In the prayer, who need your help? They are Sharon, Shay, Rafaela from, William Schofner. Elena, Michael, Jake, Olya, Dasha, Natasha, Sky, Rebecca Witzman, Melissa Defoe, Osabawaki, Bas Semen, Kyle and his wife, Maria, Valentin and Svetlana, and Mary B, and Jean Paul, a teenager who is still in coma. He needs your help and his family needs that kid com to come back home and everyone in this list also would like to use your help your love please touch their hearts uh, reach out your hands and give them strength wishes you know whatever they wish come true and prayers answered dear god please forgive us our sins thank you very much amen God is love. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for listening to my message. Thank you for um, praying with me. That's number one. Thanks for comments, wishes, prayers, and thanks for the super chats as well, for the money. Tomorrow is Saturday, two-hour stream, and I will try perhaps... I don't know, I have to discuss with earlier, uh, but I don't know, I don't know, we'll see. So I can get, I'll show you Tashkent, I'm, I'm, I want to get outside, I want to stream outside, I want to show you how wonderful the city right now is, uh, it's not hot, still not hot, people are out uh, walking, having fun, you know, it's a fantastic place, so anyway. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you tomorrow. You are all are you all are awesome and you rock. Please keep on coming back for more.